Memcho deserves some respect. Hi guys, hope you all are doing good. I'm back with episode 10 review of Ashi no Ko season 2 so let's get into the groove. At first we see Aqua confront Taiki after discovering they may share the same father, making him, Taiki, and Ruby half-siblings. They go to Taiki's home, where Taiki reveals that his parents died in a double suicide. He tells Aqua their father's name was Sijiro Uehara, leaving Aqua shocked at Sijiro's death. Taiki admits he disliked his father and chose his mother's family name for his stage name. Aqua later returns home, explains his plans to Ruby, and reflects on their father's death. I was definitely wrong in thinking that Taiki wouldn't know much about their father, but the big reveal was so anticlimactic that it's making me think there is more to this. I mean this has been Aqua's main goal throughout the series, and he finally reached it, but the moment wasn't impactful at all. By the way, Aqua is certainly a womanizer. Then we see that after Kana checks on Aqua, he reads Akane's messages and contemplates whether he deserves a happy life. Meanwhile, Mimcho, Kana, and Ruby discuss their YouTube channel, excited that they're nearing 20,000 subscribers. Mimcho explains the importance of reaching this milestone and suggests filming room tour videos. They start with Kana's room, where Kana shows off expensive items she hasn't used. Despite her pricey purchases, Kana assures everyone that she knows how to manage her finances. I didn't expect Aqua to give up on getting revenge this calmly. I mean I know he can't do anything to a dead person, but Aqua only lived to get revenge, so him giving up like this was a bit strange. However, after letting go of his negative emotions he was smiling like Ai, and I really liked that little detail. Also mad respect for Mimcho, because getting 20,000 subs with just a few videos on YouTube is honestly very impressive. I mean as a small creator I know how hard things are on YouTube. Moving on we see Ruby return home and look at her IE posters, considering taking them down because she doesn't want the world to know she's IE's daughter. As she lies in bed, she reflects on naming her idol group Bikamichi to fulfill IE's dream and reunite with Goru. Later, Memcho, Ruby, and Kana discuss Memcho's music video plan, but Kana mentions her final Tokyo Blade performances might cause scheduling conflicts. Memcho assures her they'll find a solution. Memcho then asks Miyako about the song request for their group, and Miyako reveals she asked Hiruma, a composer who worked with Ai's idol group, to create it. I'm not sure whether Ruby is hiding Ai's identity because she wants to prove herself to the world without using Ai's name as a support, or it's just a cultural thing. Also Memcho coming up with new video ideas was super relatable. We see Aqua show initial interest in Hiruma but pulls back, not wanting to get involved due to what he knows about his father's death. Ruby pushes Miyako to encourage Hiruma to finish composing the song quickly, explaining why it would benefit her. Miyako calls Haruma, who agrees to try and create a great song. Kana suggests that Haruma suffers from Big Shot Syndrome, which she believes is hindering his ability to write the song for them. In response, Miyako sends Haruma a recording of Ruby. It was nice to see all the girls getting super hype about their new project, which is always a good sign, and it was really hilarious how Ruby threw a tantrum like a kid, and how easily Miyako gave in to her. Also I'm kinda liking Aqua's new positive attitude. At the end we see Ruby motivate Haruma to write the song. Aqua informs the audience that the Tokyo Blade stage play run has ended and contemplates his next steps. Ruby and the others persuade him to join them on a trip to Miyazaki. After thinking it over, Aqua agrees to Ruby's request. A mysterious girl is then shown. Looks like we will be getting a lot more of Ruby's side of the story for the time being, and I think that's a really great way of storytelling, because this way we can connect with both of our MCs, rather than just one. Also whoever that new girl is, she doesn't look like good news to me. Overall this was a pretty fun episode, and all the YouTube stuff was really relatable. If I had to complain about one thing then it would be that the big reveal wasn't as impactful as I was expecting it to be, but maybe there will be more to it later on. Anyways thanks for watching everyone. If you like my video then check out some of my other videos.
Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to keep me motivated to make more videos, and you can also leave a comment if you want to say something, because it helps me fight the almighty YouTube algorithm, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram or check out my Facebook page, links are given in the description, until then see ya.